Welcome to the Workbench and welcome to Wheels and Wings TV. Today, with many thanks to our good friends at Borgfell Canada, we've got our hands on an actual final production kit of Tamiya's brand new 148 scale Lockheed P38 Lightning. Let's have a look at it. So before we start, it's going to be a good idea to have a good flip through the instructions because there are relevant parts to either the F or the G variants and they are called out in the instructions. So grab a highlighter, go through the instructions and mark off relevant parts in each step. Now uh, IPMS Stockholm uh, on their website, they have a fantastic article on US Air Force and Navy interior colors from the Second World War. According to them, early P-38Fs apparently did have a olive drab cockpit as opposed to what's called out in the instructions for interior green. From the F1 variant onwards, they did switch to the interior green cockpits. So if you're picking a plane other than the two in the kit, you may want to consult some references to make sure you're getting it as close to the real thing as you can. Uh, we are going to be building the F boxing this time as a restored museum example, and that one is done in interior green. Now, like most kits, this one starts in the cockpit. And we are going to get the cockpit floor and the side walls with all their relevant parts assembled individually and painted up before we bring the entire tub together. You're also going to want to grab the roof of the nose wheel bay because there is a hump that protrudes through the floor. That needs to be cockpit color painted as well. The instrument panel in this kit, although simple, is rendered very well with a nice decal. Um, two different instrument panels depending on the F or the G kit with two corresponding decal sheets. With careful painting and detailing, this will be completely suitable and a photo etch part is not going to be needed, especially as the instrument panel is buried relatively deep in the cockpit, much like a Focke-Wulf 190. Not much can be seen once it's actually in there. While we're dealing with the other cockpit parts, we're going to skip ahead to steps 44 and 49 as these also deal with the seat, the pilot's armored panel, the radios, and a few other parts. These are all going to be painted up in the same interior green. All right, with the cockpit done, you might also want to skip ahead in the instructions and assemble the main wheel bays for the left and right booms as well if you prefer to paint them before assembly or, like we're going to do here, paint them at the end with a general assembly, mask them off. And before we join the upper and lower nose and wing sections, you're going to want to decide if any or which drop tanks you're going to want to use, as there are two options in this kit. Uh, there are several holes that do need to be opened up. Um, we are going to be doing a museum restored example. This one does not even have the hard points fitted, so we're just going to skim over that part today. We can now get the upper and lower nose sections brought together, and don't forget about your balls. To me, include three large ball bearings in this kit for your nose weight so you don't have to run to the hardware store and buy some fishing weights or steal them off your car. Um, give you just enough weight, no chance of this thing sitting on its tail like you've had to do with other kits in the past. With the nose and uh, wing section brought together, we can now close up the left and right booms around the wheel bays. Um, these fit very, very well. Very nice positive locating points. A couple of pins that go through both sides of the booms and into the radiators, securely lining everything up. Um, there, now, there is a panel line, a construction join, along the top and bottom of the boom behind the radiators. Do not fill this. That was there on the real aircraft, much like a BF-109. Uh, top and bottom of the fuselage did have a noticeable seam, so the judges can't dock you for that one. Um, now we're going to grab one of these Molotow chrome pens. Now these are not just for car modelers. Um, this gives you a very, very nice shiny reflector in the landing lights. And if you're doing the G variant, it has the three um, identification lights on the lower part of the fuselage nose section. Um, chrome these up and then put your colored transparent paint on the lenses and you're going to catch the light very well. Now we're going to add the surrounds for the turbochargers to the upper wing. Um, each of these have two small air scoops on either side of the turbocharger. These have very shallow uh, indentations molded into the front. Um, it would be best to get a small drill bit and drill these out open as they should be actual scoops and not just a shallow depression. Um, now the instructions call out for assembling the turbocharger and installing it into the upper wing at this point. 
to ease painting, you can assemble the turbocharger completely and put it off to the side. You will have to leave the small section of fuselage that overlaps the turbocharger off till later. Just make sure you paint that at the same time as you do the rest of the fuselage so that everything matches. The parts fit very closely, so you're not gonna have any weird gaps to take care of after the paint. All right, now back to the booms. Um, we're gonna have to pay a lot of attention here for the oil coolers and for the radiators. You do have to paint these areas as they are gonna be more or less hidden on the finished aircraft and are gonna be hard to paint later on. Uh, so you're gonna wanna paint the oil cooler areas uh, neutral gray, your underneath color, as well as getting the faces of them in some sort of metallic color. This comes up to one of the best parts of this kit, um, and one of the problems that there are known with a lot of the other 48 scale lightnings on the market is the very poor fit and alignment of the booms to the wings, to the tail, and so on. Uh, to me, as parts, a very positive location, no play in parts at all. Booms line up and stay very square to the wing and to the center line of the aircraft. The one piece tail surface slots in almost a friction fit with no, practically no glue actually needed, lines everything up very well. That gets locked in with the rudders, very strong, very straight, no having to make up a jig and keep everything lined up with Lego bricks. Tamiya, once again, their engineering nailed it on this one. Very easy to put together and keep nice and square. Uh, one thing to mention when doing the wheel wells, there are two small parts for the forward actuators for the wheel well doors. Um, if you install these um, very early on, these can be damaged. Um, one of the struts for the landing gear is also installed early on in the build. That is a very strong part. Um, no real risk of that being broken, but these actuators are very small. I would recommend that you either install these later in the build when you attach the main wheel doors, or if you're installing the main landing gear leg at this time, install those parts that will offer some protection. Um, perhaps Tamiya should have maybe mentioned this later on in the instructions, but is their workflow have you add the wheel, the leg, the door, everything in one linear fashion. All right, we're gonna get the propellers put together now. Now keep in mind, they turned in opposite directions. Make sure you keep them straight. You don't wanna have your props on the wrong way. Now, Tamiya, not too many people can pull this off. They have a four part prop hub. Prop is molded in one piece with the blades and the backing plate. And then there are three parts that go around the propeller blades and then the actual cone of the spinner. These parts fit together very well, no visible gaps, where parts join that should actually be a panel line look like a panel line even actually they've been glued. Very well done by Tamiya, very nice engineering here. All right, now we can finally get to some of the clear parts and typical Tamiya, crystal clear, very well rendered, sharp framing. These are gonna be very easy to mask. Uh, Tamiya do include one of their uh, masking sheets. Unfortunately, these are not die cut like a lot of the aftermarket ones are. They do have the outlines printed on and if you're careful with a knife, you can cut these out and they will work just fine or some good old Tamiya tape, sharp blade, and you can mask these up yourself as well. Uh, you do run and decide whether you're gonna do this open or closed. And once again, you do have different canopy opening options depending on which variant you've done. That is the majority of our assembly done. So now we can crack out the airbrush and get onto the fun part, which is painting and breathe a little bit of life into this model. Now, before you go crazy with your Mr. Surfacers and your primers and everything else, you always wanna shoot your canopy parts with your interior color or whatever color the framing is supposed to be. Now this is your typical early war American paint scheme, neutral gray on the bottom, olive drab on top. Chances are if the demarcation on the sides is gonna be soft, the demarcation between the upper and lower surfaces on the leading edges of the wings, tail surfaces are also gonna be soft. You're also gonna to wanna to stuff a little bit of foam into your oil coolers because of course we have pre-painted these with the underside color, so we don't need to hit those again. Um, your radiators, you may wanna mask those off. Now, you may have chosen to paint the wheel bays first and mask those off with some foam or some tissue and then paint your undersides. We prefer to simply for the expedition of masking, paint the lower surfaces first, mask around the wheel wells and then spray them. Now. Do not skimp on masking tape. If you think you will get paint on it, cover it up. 
All right, so we've got all the painting done. Time to move on to decals. Um, now, if you want, you can gloss up the model in preparation, not strictly required. If you take your time and careful application of your decals with some good setting solutions, decals will go on to flat paint just fine, provided you pay a little extra attention to make sure they are completely bedded down onto the surface. Um, now, the decals you want to pay attention to are the mirrors. Um, P-38s had two oval mirrors on the inside of each engine nacelle so the pilot could see down and at the landing gear and make sure that they were fully deployed. You don't want to flat or semi over these as you're going to give them a very dull finish. These are highly polished. So you want to put these on at the very end and make sure they're snuggled down really good into that flat varnish. Once your decals are down, we're going to get those sealed in with a coat of gloss so that we have no problems with our weathering washes. We're going to use a dark gray for the bottom and a dark brown for the top. Keep your black panel wash just to panels that would be opened frequently, to control surfaces, things that would have a noticeable gap. Um, it's one of those arguments, are there actual gaps between panels and airplanes? If you do a black wash, it's going to be really obvious. Do a darker shade of your color is going to be a little bit more subtle, which is kind of what we're going to go for here, especially as we are doing a relatively clean museum example. Now, if you're using the Tamiya panel liners, you want to give those probably about 20 odd minutes to set up before you start tidying up any errant runs or drips. Once those are done, get out your favorite ungloss, seal your wash in, and that is your final finish. Last thing, we're going to add on a radio antenna with whatever your favorite medium is. Um, they go from each vertical tail surface to the rear of the pilot's cockpit. Um, you might want to get some reference photos here. Seems different aircraft had them attached differently and there may have been more than two radio antennas. Um, so once again, consult your references at the very least from the canopy to each boom and that'll call it done. Final thing. Take off the masking from your canopy and make sure there's no pixie dander inside. Or if you're doing an open cockpit, attach on your final open portions and you're done. Overall, this is a, another fantastic kit from Tamiya. Instructions, as usual, well laid out, very clear, leave no guesswork. Parts engineering fits very well. If you have two identical parts, they're keyed so that you can't possibly mess them up. It's its own adjective. What's it like? It's a Tamiya. Um, your more advanced modelers, super detailers, definitely a good base. You're gonna get through the main structures very quick, gonna get to those more time intensive areas. Throw a little bit of aftermarket at it, dress those areas up. Now, because Borgfeld like us so much, they sent us not one, but two of these new kits. Uh, one white box pre-production and of course this right off the assembly line full production kit. Now the pre-production kit as for contrast we have built up with some of the aftermarket upgrades that would definitely help this kit along a little bit. We've added some metal gun barrels from Master. Um, these install very well into the kit. You just got to cut off the molded in barrels. Uh, we've added some uh, pre-colored Edward photo etch seat belts because of the potential um, differences in wheel treads, we've gotten some resin wheels with the early style block tread. Um, these also have the uh, flat spot, which the Tamiya wheels don't have. Gives the impression of a little bit more weight as this was a big heavy aircraft. Um, these fit very well, took a little bit of modification as I believe these wheels were designed for the earlier um, P-38 kits from Hasegawa Academy. So it took a little bit of modification where the wheel axles mount in. But these three small, relatively inexpensive upgrades definitely uh, ramp up the detail level in this kit, even more so than it is already out of the box. With thanks to our good friends at Borgfeld Canada, we've got another great kit of another classic Second World War fighter from one of the top manufacturers in the business.